Mark, how you doing? Uh, I'm great. You. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Hey, uh, pretty important fight for you, it seems like, this week, you know, needing to, to kind of bounce back. So take me through a little bit about how that works for you in a training camp when you know, you know, don't want to say your back's against the wall, but, but yeah. when you know you need to come out there and get something done. Uh, basically, I think I've been in this situation before uh, with uh, Joe Duffy fight. And uh, I'm not really thinking of it that way because I feel like I've been there before, whereas now I'm more experienced. This is my 11th fight in the UFC. And uh, I feel like I'm a better fighter coming to this fight. So it's not about me being worried back against the wall. It's about me going out there and trying to impress the crowd because that's what I like to do. Especially this being my 11th fight in the UFC and this crowd back. I've not fought in front of a crowd for maybe three years now. And I'm just more excited going out there and putting, putting the show for the crowd. Is there, is there a way to, to kind of put into words how much you've missed being able to fight in front of fans, or will you not really know until until Saturday night? How, nah, how much I know, it? I know, I love crowd. When I do something crazy and I hear them scream, I love that. So just having them back it gets me excited. So I'm really looking to put a show instead of me thinking, oh, I've got my back against the wall. You know, I know I'm, I'm I, I put exciting fights. I'm an exciting fighter, and uh, I'm not really worried about that because it's about putting putting a show. You know, it's MMA, there's many ways of losing. And uh, I just feel like as long as I put my streak together, I'm good. So now it's about putting a show and uh, trying to get these wins back up. Do you think um, not being able to be in front of a, of a crowd these last two losses played into that at all? Or? Nah, it just, it's been different. It's been a lot of, a lot of things just not outside just the fight in itself because... Think about we've been through COVID and like my fire, my last, my last fees, uh, I couldn't train. I didn't have a gym to train because COVID, I had no to train. So I, I was having to train outside uh, in the rain with my, just with my friend because I'm training in the gym, you're getting grassed up all the training. So you couldn't really do anything. So I have been to training. Like I turned my, my, my uh, apartment into a gym. I pulled off maybe four mats, square mats, and I smashed the walls up and everything. Just, just, just trying to get training in. So it was a bit difficult. And the second fight again, like, obviously trying to adjust to things and just things are going to look different. But now I feel things are getting back to normal where we can train properly, we can do things differently. So I'm just excited. Fans are back, back to how it should be. I heard a lot of stories like during COVID about people turning their houses or their garages or their apartments yeah. into makeshift gyms. I caused some serious damage to my room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pool walls, holes everywhere. Is is there a way that you that you were able to sort of use that during that time to sort of give yourself a mental edge and say, look at the the links that I'm willing to go for for this career? Uh, yeah, because I feel like if you went for that, I feel if you, if you're not mentally strong, you probably like you just I'm done with this. You just say I'm done. There's too much going on, and because uh, at the end of the day, like I'm trying to get paid at the same time. I had maybe I think three fights, something cancelled. And I was in free camps. All that is costing me money and everything. So it's like, oh, why do I end up from here now? So it just, you know, I'm really, really excited to get him back to having crowd, having everything back to normal so I can put on a show. I mean, people had a built-in excuse, right? They could say, well, I can't go to the gym. I can't leave. I'm not supposed to leave my house. So yeah. I guess I'll just pack it in and be lazy. But yeah, you, you went can't. the opposite way. Uh-huh. I yeah. mean, I went to even, because I remember you couldn't, couldn't even drive to go somewhere. I had to like sneak out to try and go buy a bike <laughs> so I can start. <laughs> I had to literally sneak out so to try and get a bike so I can start work on my cardio and stuff. It was, it was difficult, but that's what I got myself into. And uh, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, to get to the top. Talk to me a little bit about your opponent. Um, comes from a good team, as do you, obviously, but um, he's built up a pretty strong, quick rise in, in the last year or so. So what does he um, bring to the table that you've been able to see and where's he going to be dangerous for you yeah. on Saturday? I'll be honest, uh, I've watched maybe one fight of his. Uh, he fought one of the guys I was training with, Chris Chris Duncan and Contender Series. But I just don't feel he's on my level yet. I feel he's good. He's beat the guys that he's beaten, but I don't think, you know, he's, he's got a big test and I don't think he's going to go through me yet because I, I still feel like, Mentally, I still feel like I'm still a prospect. You know, I've had 11 fights in the UFC. This is my 11th fight, but to me, mentally, I still feel like a prospect because I had nine amateur fights. Uh, I'm 14 and five now, so I'm still learning in the game. I'm still really new to the game. I'm still learning, so I feel like I've still got a lot to offer. 
where I feel, I think that six fights, seven fights. So he's still fairly new. So to me, it's like, I'm not, I'm not showing him that like, you know, you have your time, you have your time to this. You, you know, when you're not ready, you're not ready. And the names you've been in there against in, in those 11 fights in particular, like probably the last seven or eight, yeah. one right after another, it's just very, very solid guys, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing he's going to bring to me that I haven't seen. I'm just uh, excited. It's like I said, there's crowd there. You know, I'm ready. If he would have bang, I'm ready to bang. You want to go wherever, you know, I'm ready. Do you think long term um, at this point in your career? I mean, you can't realistically say, oh, I need to win two fights and then I can get a title shot. But but, but do you have those kind of long term aspirations? I still have a long term aspiration, but I do feel like now my only goal is just to get these wins back up, you know, get the wins. And we'll look, we'll look, after that, we'll look further up. But right now, just getting the wins. Gotcha. Thank you so yeah. much, man. Thank you. What's up, Mark? How are you? I'm good. How are you? you? Good. You said it yourself. You've got, you know, 10 this year, 11th fight in the UFC, and this guy's got one fight in the UFC, and on paper, he's the favorite. You're the underdog coming into this, on paper at least. How does that make you feel? Do you think that the betters got this one wrong? <laughs> no, I mean, I be, I'll be myself that before as well. It's okay. You know, people are kind of naive. When we see somebody knock somebody out, maybe two two wins, good knockouts, they're like, oh, he, he's the guy, he's the guy. But don't know this is the UFC. You look good, but there's next guy. You're welcome. Let's get let test you. Let's see what you got. So I'm ready to see what he's got, and uh, I'm excited to put in a show. And then everybody's kind of still talking about UFC London last weekend. Yeah. Is every UK fighter now thinking about how do I get myself in a position to get back on a London card whenever they go back there? I have to be there. What do I have to do to make sure I'm in that crowd next time? Is that in the back of your mind at all? No, nah, but I just, I don't think of it like that, but I know it was a great card. And uh, I feel like right now, especially with the position I'm in, uh, I'm opening the main card in Columbus. I, I'm, I'm happy with that, you know, like it meant to be. So I'm happy with that. But I do feel... After finishing this guy, I probably want to be like come in event or something in London because I do believe like, you know, for example, uh, Dan Hooker, I seen it for uh, come in in London. It was in, I think two losses, two losses or something. I'm not sure, but it's like I feel like I should be in that spot probably because I know I put exciting fights in London. I'm un I'm undefeated in London, but I'm excited going back there. And do you have a favorite moment from that weekend's card? It was crazy finishes all around. Uh, it was a lot of crazy a finishes. A lot of crazy finishes. Uh, Molly. Yeah. The spinning back elbow. Uh, Jai Herbert's fight. That was a yeah. good fight. It was a good comeback from a ut Utopia, Utoria. Uh, uh, ut Utoria. <laughs> yeah, that was a good fight. I enjoyed that fight as well. Yeah. And, and uh, Arnold Allen. That was a good, good finish. And then Tom Aspinall, future heavyweight champion or no? Yeah, it made, it made that look easy. It yeah, made that yeah. look pretty easy. That was a good fight too. Thank yeah. you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.